Hello YouTube, it's time to look at the Light Assault and Engineer weapons for the Terran Republic. This video will be the first in a series of three covering the Light Assault and Engineer weapons for each of the three factions. For Light Assault and Engineers, they have access to two primary weapon branches, carbines and shotguns. Let's start with the carbines. Terran Republic weapons are all about DACA. Who has more DACA, who has the most DACA, whose guns are the shootiest. This is the staple for every Terran Republic weapon, to the extent that if you want a normal carbine that just has a standard 30 round magazine and hits a little harder in turn, you don't have that option as a Light Assault or an Engineer. There are zero normal 30-round carbines accessible by either class for the Terran Republic. Their carbine magazine size is 40 rounds for all weapons. TR weapons specialize in having larger magazine capacities, but don't really shoot faster than either of the other faction's weapons. Each faction has a fast-firing carbine and lockable that is about the same in terms of fire speed, but the fastest-firing carbine in the game belongs to the new conglomerate. However, only the TR get one that fires very fast and also has 40 rounds. 40-round carbines are completely off-limits to both of the other factions. In return for this benefit, TR carbines do low damage. However, this drawback is mitigated because for a large portion of the other faction's carbines, the same number of bullets are required for kills. This allows TR guns the potential to kill more enemies without having to reload. On the other hand, run bullet spread affects all weapons and harms TR weapons more than it does the other two factions as a direct result of larger magazine size, causing a reduction in accuracy that is not displayed in the weapon statistics. TR players also have the least variety, as there are no carbine options that don't have a flat 40 round magazine, so playing with a lower magazine size but harder hitting carbine to avoid the random bullet spread drawback is not an option for TR players. There are five carbines you can get as a TR player, but there's something special about them. I'm going to show you their stats all in a certain order, see if you notice anything. Yeah, all these weapons do exactly the same damage and have the same magazine size. To put it simply, all five TR carbines are the same gun with slight tweaks to their fire rate and reload speed. There are no other differences. There's no blue gun or green gun, they're all gray. The question is, which of the 50 shades of gray do you want to be your shade of gray? Because nearly always, someone who reloads faster will lose to someone who fires faster, this really limits which guns are better by default. You can kill any non-max enemy without having to reload, so your reload benefit will only be played if you and your target empty a full magazine in each other and fail to kill one another. With that philosophy, faster reload time would be one of the less useful benefits for weapons. A trade-off with higher fire rate and more reload time is basically a case of, do you want the benefit now or later? And since you can mostly kill an enemy and be killed yourself in the now, faster reload is a benefit that doesn't often get fielded. So why not just pick the gun with the highest fire rate and longest reload time? Well, by default there's no reason not to, but there are some modifiers to it. This is the Lynx, and of all the TR carbines, it has the highest fire rate and longest reload time, giving it the lowest time to kill of all the TR carbines. I've noticed that with this weapon, because it fires so fast, I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a heavy assault, with a shield up, and win much more often than I can with a default gun. Statistically speaking, this gun is just better than the other four, but there's a catch. All the TR carbines have a 40-round magazine, kill a target in four shots to the head, and seven shots to the torso, barring nano-weave armor. Even if someone had maxed out nano-weave armor, you would still have enough bullets to kill four enemies without having to reload if all your shots hit. Which is never going to happen because the guns all have random bullet spread. Random bullet spread is when rounds fly off in random directions even if the recoil of your gun didn't push them in that direction. Recoil can be player controlled by compensating for it, but random bullet spread adds in a penalty to continuous fire by making your shots deviate down random paths. In Planet Side 2, the more you fire, the worse the random bullet spread gets, so the Lynx has lower accuracy than the other weapons, but this isn't displayed in the weapon statistics. Most players who play Light Assault or Engineer will be used to the default TR Carbine, the Track 5. It's a dependable weapon of decent quality that fires reasonably fast and can kill enemies efficiently. In comparison to the default Carbine, the Lynx allows you to shorten your time to kill to the point that you can engage heavy assault players more safely, but comes with penalties that need to be compensated for as a consequence. If you start firing at an enemy from a distance and then adjust where you're firing at by looking at where your rounds are landing and how long they are taking to get to their destination, and many players do this, the Lynx will be a kick in the teeth to you. By the time you've adjusted for that, you may well have thrown half of your magazine into a wall. The weapon is still technically better than the default TR weapon, but it will require a lot of adjustment to get used to the lower response time that it requires to avoid wasting ammunition. If you're someone who already has a silver or gold medal with a default TR carbine, this weapon will require some adjustment to get used to in order to get its benefits to pay off. Meanwhile, you'll feel like your bullets are vanishing. Then there's the issue of the random bullet spread. Because this is worse the farther into the magazine you get on continuous fire, it means that your random bullet spread will increase faster than it would with a default carbine, which means that not only have you lost half of your magazine firing at an enemy who's sprinting away, your next shots will also be less accurate than they would compared to the default gun. 
You can compensate for the random bullet spread by halting your firing. The random bullet spread resets instantly once you are no longer continuously firing, putting you at your starting accuracy. But once again, this will require a lot of adjustment if you don't want to waste ammunition. The Lynx is a better weapon than the default carbine, but only if you can dedicate to it enough to manage its other drawbacks. Not everyone can do that. Some people just like to hold down fire and move their cursor, and you know what, there's no shame in that. The gun is an upgrade, but I view it as a side grade at best, considering how much you'll need to do with it to get it fully functional. And that's not going to be worth the investment to a lot of people. As for the other carbines, they depend on how you feel about the default weapon. Because they're all basically slightly modified versions of the same weapon, you can use that to predict what's right for you. If you're happy with the default carbine but would like more firing control and want burst fire, there is a burst fire weapon, and a slower firing version if the default fire is too fast for your tastes. Ultimately, that will come down into your personal preference, but they are essentially all the same gun with their fire rate and reload times adjusted. If you are unsure which is best for you, I recommend using the trial system to see what feels right. There are generally two different playstyles offered for light assault players. You can hop onto a roof and aim down the sights, or you can drop down and hit fire spray or use a short range sight. If you fight close a lot and die often to heavy assault players that have their shields up, then the Lynx may be a good investment for you, because at very close range, the weapon's drawbacks are more mitigated. But from a distance, firing control is generally more important. And while you can do that with a Lynx, you'll need to invest time getting used to the gun. Now there's another drawback to consider, though. The default TR gun is pretty nice on its own, and it's a trustworthy weapon, but if you want the Lynx, you're being asked for 700 station cash or 1,000 cert points. 1,000 cert points, this gun is not worth. For the vast majority of people, this weapon is a side grade instead of an upgrade. 100 certs would be a reasonably fair asking price for it. 150 certs would be pushing it for me. But 1,000? 1,000 certs for the Lynx? To me, it's obvious that this is a marketing ploy to try and push guns onto the consumer with station cash purchases. It's clear that the developers don't want you to pay with certs. That's the only reason for checking the price up so incredibly high. You can't make a gun open by station cash only or else your game is identified as pay to win, so the cert price is put at an extortionate level to get people to pay with station cash anyway. If there is a developer from Sony Online Entertainment out there, and they believe that the Lynx is an upgrade to the default TR Carbine and that it's worth 1,000 certs, they are on crack. I would pay 700 station cash for this gun just so I could resell it to the store and gain 1,000 certs. That would be an incredible deal to me if it were allowed to do within the store's mechanics. Think of what you could spend a thousand certs on. That's enough to fully max out a jetpack and get access to a C4 brick or a grenade bandolier upgrade. That's enough to get any attachments I want for numerous weapons that I already use. That's enough to get me both C4 brick slots as a light assault. Engineers and light assaults could both put those 1,000 cert points to much better use elsewhere. The Lynx is an upgrade, yes, but it's such a high maintenance upgrade that it's a hassle for people to adjust to due to its drawbacks. From a practicality standpoint, that makes it a side grade, and under no circumstances is it worth a thousand cert points. If you believe this weapon is legitimately worth spending 1,000 certs on instead of other upgrades, then you are on the finest Colombian cocaine that exists, and I do hope you're enjoying yourself. But there isn't a flying pink elephant outside your house, mind-controlling aliens are not coming out from under your fingernails, the earth is not flat, and this weapon is not worth 1,000 cert points. If you've got the station cache to dump on it, and you're a light assault player or engineer, consider trialing the weapon and get a feel for how long it'll take you to adjust to the differences. But if you're content with the default TR carbine and don't have the station cache to dump, then don't bother with the Lynx. It's not worth the investment in comparison to other kit upgrades. If you don't like the TR default because you wish it had more firing control, consider the burst fire model of the same weapon, the Trek 5 Burst, or the slightly reduced fire rate version, the T5 AMC, which you got unlocked if you paid for Alpha Squad. If you felt you need more fire rate and a lower time to kill, then go for the Lynx. But in comparison to the other factions, your carbines don't deviate from this style. If you were hoping for a normal 30-round magazine alternative that hits harder and was more akin to what you see in most first-person shooter games, there isn't one. Not for the TR. Now, onto the shotguns. Light Assaults and Engineers can also access the three default shotguns, which are almost the same for all three factions, so you could use this as a review for them as well. And on the note of admission fees, I'd like to note that all three shotguns each require 700 station cash or 1,000 certs. Yeah. In comparison to the Lynx, this may make the weapon even less appealing, as when it works best is when within shotgun range, but it's still outclassed by an actual shotgun for that purpose. The Lynx is basically taking slightly reduced but still powerful close quarters capability and some extra range, as opposed to being a shotgun. So how powerful are shotguns in this game? Well, I have visual displays on the screen now to show you approximate range and damage, but for reference, if a heavy assault player is close enough to kill you and you're indoors, he's usually going to be in range for you to kill him with a shotgun also. They're also very powerful against max units if you can outsmart them and don't want to spend a C4 brick. As for the shotguns themselves, technically there are three, but only two are really very good. You have a six-round semi-automatic shotgun that reloads fairly fast, an eight-round semi-automatic that reloads slower but is otherwise the same, 
and a six-round automatic shotgun that fires faster, but reloads slower than the six-round semi-auto, but faster than the eight-round one. Because I still believe that having two extra shotgun rounds will be better than having a marginally faster reload time, I'd say the eight-round shotgun, the Haymaker, is better than the six-round shotgun, the Barrage. If you want to go for reloading faster instead of a larger magazine for a shotgun, well, okay, but I'm not going to put my seal of recommendation on it. For me, the point of contest is, do you want an eight-round semi-automatic or a six-round fully automatic? But better question, what's the difference? You can fire the semi-automatic shotgun quite rapidly. The automatic shotgun is only a tiny bit faster. It'll come down to personal preference. Slight increase to shotgun firing speed, or slightly larger magazine size and killing power. Something that may influence your decision is how well can you control a fully automatic shotgun. If you hold down the trigger and spray with it, you may lose a shot or two while switching targets, and that could cost you. But ultimately, it's up to personal preference. All three shotguns can be equipped with a laser sight, however, they also have certs to increase their magazine size by four rounds. Now, this cert is identical for all three shotguns, a flat four-round magazine size increase. This benefits the two six-round shotguns more than it does the eight-round one. The six-round shotguns have three-quarters the magazine size of the eight-round. To increase it proportionately, it would need to award the six-round shotguns three shells instead of four. So in terms of value, this cert awards an edge to the automatic six-round shotgun, which can have ten shells with a cert. The eight-round default can still be bumped up to twelve and still have more, so it's a close contest. But the extended magazine cert does favor the six-round automatic shotgun. Vice versa, the existence of this cert is also one of the reasons I think a larger magazine will beat reloading speed, further outclassing the six-round non-automatic shotgun due to higher probability to end a fight without having to reload. All the shotguns have identical damage. The real question is going to be, when selecting your main weapon, how often will you use a shotgun compared to a carbine? And is the range of the shotgun suitable for your needs when compared to a carbine? Players that spend a lot of time indoors and in close quarters will benefit from a shotgun, whereas players that are more outdoorsy and fight from a greater distance will favor a carbine. The Lynx fills a middle ground compromise area, but only if you're willing to pay the high admission fee in time, money, and adjustment costs. Trial it and see if it's right for you, and if not, see what's wrong with it so you can decide what would be right for you. Personally, I'm going to make two kits, one with a shotgun, one with the Lynx, but this is because I spent $7 on the Lynx to test it for a longer period of time, and I play Light Assault almost exclusively. If I hadn't already paid the admission fee, I'd be sticking with the default carbine. The shotgun I'm probably going to use will be the 8-round semi-automatic. I personally feel that the recoil and spray cost of the automatic shotgun are too taxing, and that a 12-round shotgun with better firing control will serve me better than a 10-round full auto shotgun, considering that the automatic shotgun fires faster, only to a marginal degree. But my playstyle may not be for everyone, so hopefully the information of the various weapons will prove useful to you in helping you select which weapons you want to bond with. Thanks for watching. The next Light Assault and Engineer weapons on the list are those for the Vanu, followed by the NC. I'll see you next time, YouTube.